Today's guest is Cinders, a band out of Salt Lake City. Cinders have racked up millions of listens on Spotify and have built a reputation for themselves as being one of the bands to see live, leading them to have played tours and sold out shows across the U.S. and even the U.K. Welcome, Cinders. Welcome, welcome. So how, are you guys, how have you guys been? We, we talked a little bit before the video, but kind of uh, give a brief overview of what you guys have been up to. We've been good. Uh, we were just doing some uh, stuff yesterday. Hopefully, going to be on TV or something. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, um, but we we got an opportunity to go set up and and play and record some uh, video and some music at a venue. And I mean, it's been so long since we've played, and and so it kind of you know it's getting us excited to get back in the venues and and play some music so we had an awesome fun day yesterday and on top right. of that, to go bigger we you know for 2020 as a whole since we stayed kind of quiet we've just been writing this third record which is what rob was saying yesterday uh, to really try and push nice that's fantastic so is that a full length then that you guys are working on yeah. full length fantastic. i don't have the album name yet but um yeah it'll, it should be coming out later this year do you have any idea of how many tracks you'll have on it? It's looking like 10 to 11. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, yeah, you guys have a single coming out here in, uh, at the end of the month, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's growing up. We're excited about it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I actually was able to hear it. Uh, one of the lucky few, I guess, to hear what? it before it's released. And <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> no, it's great, you guys. Honestly, it's uh. It's really good, really well done. Um, talk about what inspired you to to write that. Like it's it's called Growing Up. So so why why did you feel that song? Um, <clears throat> it's I mean we we've been we're definitely the type of people who are pushing for a career in um, in something that we don't have to grow up essentially because we're you know traveling around, playing shows, sleeping on floors, uh, driving in the van, sleeping on the floors, lots of floors. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, just, we, we, we want to have fun, hang out, do, do what we love. And so, um, but until that point, we're still having to, you know, work our day-to-day -day jobs to make, make ends meet. And that sucks. And we hate it. And we, 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 uh, wanted to write a song about that <laughs> yeah oh, that's just, fantastic oh, yeah. Kind of back. um i mean we've all been big haters of the nine to five you know <laughs> you have to go to school you have to get a job you have to climb the corporate ladder and you have to have a boss and we just we we think that more people should be pursuing their dreams not all people have a dream or want to but if you have a dream like we do and we feel really strongly about it, it's like we just want to encourage people that you don't have to, you know, fit into this mold of what society wants you to be. You can do what you want to do and and stay who you are. You don't have to shave. You can wear what you want. You can grow your hair, whatever. I, I think it's just there's so there's so much to not growing up in, in life. Yeah. I kind of wanted to resemble that with you know rowdiness and just having fun with life so no that's fantastic i think that's a point that will resonate with a ton of people you know like you mentioned the nine to five and i don't know anybody who doesn't get drained from from that system at some point you know at least at some point usually it's yeah. kind of the whole time you know so i think i think that's great i loved it i i love the lyrics the way it was all put together the production was fantastic so i'm excited um and you guys have a music video out uh, that'll come out around that time right yeah, yeah a little after fantastic fantastic well i'm excited to see it so let's let's uh kind of go backwards a little bit and, and how did you guys start how did you meet each other what was kind of your origin uh so we have a joke about how we started um we say tinder um but on the <laughs> real uh, so montana and i went to high school together and didn't know each other um <laughs> oh nice Go with we, we knew who we the knew, other person I was. knew him and I hated him because nice. his yeah. name that was <laughs> yeah. like anyone that's his name last name is three words yeah. so it's just it didn't <laughs> um no but so Montana and I met 
through mutual friends in high school. Um, and then Brad, we uh, met through Instagram. We accidentally followed him and he thought it was on purpose. Yeah. So he's like, hey, do you guys need a drummer? And we're like, they act actually, like, yeah. Like, we just accidentally followed you. Like, you were nobody. And it's like, I was a sick drummer. He was a <laughs> sick drummer with 100 you guys followers. Didn't have a drummer. So I, I messaged yeah. him and was like, so you guys looking for a drummer or something? And we auditioned him. Yeah. <laughs> One man auditioned him. We had a gig like three days. They're like, so um, do you want to play a show with us in three days? And I was like, okay, let's do it. It was horrible. So, yeah. It was really- <laughs> oh, man. So so you drum. Uh, so Montana, you sing? Yeah. Yeah. And sing then, guitar. The- he does backup vocals and bass and then drums. Man, that's awesome. That's well, awesome. So you guys met it. He plays a lot of instruments. He plays a lot yeah, of instruments. Yeah, yeah. But Brad. I just, I just only. Drive. Brad plays he, a lot of instruments now. He, he per- learned. He does percussion <laughs> and melodica now. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Oh man, so you guys had a gig three days after you joined, huh? Yeah, something like that. Oh man, no yeah, yeah, oh, kidding. Early three days. It was absolutely horrible. And it wasn't that he. Insane. It was, it was like, hey, come over for a. Uh, um, an audition. audition and then we messaged him hey do you want to play, play do you want to play a show but like at the same time as him as us being like yeah you, you can be in the band <laughs> like we never actually <laughs> said like yeah you're in the band it was just more so like so we're playing a show do you want to do it <laughs> type of a thing i don't yeah. think there's ever a moment where we said you're in the band type of a thing he's just yeah. been in the band so he's just, he's just you're just kind of there, not not yeah. officially in the band. You're just yeah, kinda... still, still he's still actually the same. our backup. Singer. We have a joke. Uh, we have a guy that we made up that also is in a Marvel universe. Coincidentally, nice. Um, oh yeah. So Brad's our backup drummer. We're just waiting for him to get back. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, that's funny. Well, they don't what? Actually, what? In, like, in front of his face. Yeah, in front of his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh man how many years ago was that when did you guys meet like when did this start early, early 2015 oh cool cool so you guys have been going yeah for a little bit then october-ish was like the start start yeah so there was stuff before but like october 2015 was like the start start the start 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 we usually start start pregnancy no, no the, the birth. birth there was pregnancy <laughs> before the birth yeah <laughs> oh man so you guys, what did you guys, oh, sorry, boy. Yeah, so you guys have really interesting sound, like, and there's a lot of mixes to it. What were the bands that influenced you guys personally growing up that led you to kind of play your instruments and come together in this way? Pop, punk, pop, punk. Pop, punk <laughs> didn't inspire you growing up. Let's be real, Brad. You wanted to play Muse. Um, <laughs> go ahead, Brad. You can start. Um, I mean, growing up, one of my favorite bands that I learned, like, entire albums on the drums was Motion City Soundtrack. And I am heavily influenced by pop punk since I've been playing the drums, just Paramore, Blink, I learned some Muse, just just like whatever I could, it was a lot more rocking. And so it's like, I like to hit the drums hard and I like tons of cymbals type of thing. So I think that's where that came from. What about you? Nice. I Mine is somewhere in between Jack Johnson and Linkin Park. Nice, <laughs> nice. I, Good spread. Yeah, I, I learned uh, like playing acoustic. I started on acoustic guitar and I <clears throat> learned how to play it through, you know, listening to Jack Johnson, that kind of, you know, lame, not lame, but just calmer stuff. And then I, the first song I learned on the drums actually it was Good it really? People by Jack Johnson. Nice. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah, and then it's like, I mean, I love Linkin Park, all that more, you know, hard rock type stuff. And so it kind of, I, I mean, Dave Matthews is later. Oh, I just always heard you like that. <laughs> I, I've loved Dave Matthews for like 10 years or so. So that definitely plays in part of it. But um, yeah, I mean, I, there's, there's a lot of stuff. And even he, while Cinders was starting, he was playing in a um, hardcore metal band. And so <laughs> nice. it's the, the, the ranges that we've, we've, uh, you know been inspired from are pretty wide what what did you listen to so now? growing up like montana said i just grew up to punk music and like jazz music and old school rap but not all that mixed um and i didn't even play bass really until this band like i learned like <laughs> nice. bass lines and the smiths before this band other than that i i didn't even own a bass actually until this band started um 
So dream, it was right? apparently <laughs> my destiny. Um, but yeah, growing up, just just punk music, basically punk, and and then like delved into uh, a huge influence for me was this band called Stray Cats. They're like a rockabilly band. Um, and then it yeah just morphed into everything. I th- yeah, that's awesome. I think we wanted music that was approachable. Like we've always had some random people say like, yeah, it's mom approved rock. Like <laughs> a lot of people don't like aggressive, heavy music. And as yeah. much as I love to just play that type of stuff, I was still kind of in the realm of, you know, pop, whatever it was, pop rock, pop punk. And, and I think that just means it's a little more approachable for anyone to listen to. And, and so I think we, just kind of all agreed on making something that everyone liked with kind of throwing in some of that heavier stuff that live we can go crazy and and just have a ton of fun and i know all of us really like to ask people what they think we sound like (laughs) because not no one said the same thing someone was just telling us yesterday at the news thing that we were doing that we sound like Green Day. Yeah. <laughs> but oh, we're yeah. talking like Green Day. But that's the thing. That's awesome. That's a great comparison. But we've heard Death Cab, Group Love, Mumford and Sons, and Green heart. Day, Head in the Heart, you know, all that. Yeah. All that what, what do you guys think? <laughs> yeah. What you know, do you guys think? Yeah, um, I, as you're talking about this, just looking up think, like... put some spot <laughs> real quick. <laughs> no, no, actually, uh, so we we heard we've heard, you know, your stuff kind of released um, as it was going forward. You know, we've been obviously aware of you guys this whole time. And I agree. You, you guys don't have, you're not just like anything. The, the newest song, uh, you can tell that there's like punk ideas in it for sure. You know, absolutely. But it's, it's, it's just a lot of stuff. I don't know. Yeah. That's a, that's, that's, that's a what good I point. Like I, yeah. 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 That's, that's <laughs> yeah. If you were like, it's a knockoff Imagine Dragons, then it's like, no. Oh. No. yeah. Yeah, the closest band I would say I've heard is uh, Mowgli's. I don't know if you guys know those guys. Oh, I'm play live one time. Do one too. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the only band I could think of that like is close to you guys. But you guys have very unique sound. It's like so, like I said, it's a huge blend of genres. It's really interesting. Thanks. Arms Akimbo. Yeah. The Mowgli's. Oh, dude, a band that we're friends with from LA did a really cool tour with the Mowgli's. Oh yeah. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. But yeah, so so let's talk about this year then. So as far as touring goes. You guys have toured before. We know that. You guys have toured quite a bit before, but 2020 hit. Uh, how was that? How was the whole pandemic for Cinders? Nice. <laughs> um, as much, sorry. Oh, no. Oh, I was going to say, I'll, I'll start off as, as Brad was going to say, as much as we wanted to go tour. Um, we were only able to play a handful of shows. Like right before COVID hit, um, we did a couple of things you know, in the state. And we were actually planning on going to South by still out in Austin. And then, you know, we were waiting till kind of everything closed down. And then we still didn't even know what was going to go on. Um, So not much touring as much as we dreamed about it, but it was really beneficial too, because it allowed us to just really buckle down and write this whole record. That's what I was going to say. I mean, there's always like good things that happen from bad things and yeah. you know whenever we have like one little show all of a sudden the next three weeks we're rehearsing and we're not writing at all for three weeks you know and so it's really helped us to really get a lot of time to just write you know three times three four times a week we're meeting up Saturdays we usually are here nine to five or whatever just cranking it out and so it's it's been a blessing as much as we miss it but <laughs> yeah yeah no that's that's awesome do you guys have a a studio is it, have you guys kind of built a studio or are you do you go into a studio or we've been fortunate enough yeah it's right behind us the this the isolation booth we've been fortunate enough. Oh, nice. Nice. all three of our records <laughs> can't really see it much all three of our records yeah. we've uh, self-recorded so that's um, fantastic yeah. oh man so all three of the records we've self-recorded so it's been this is the producer right here, Montana. <laughs> nice. He's a, a magician. It's easy when it's when it's uh, some cool cool drums and cool bass and other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> when you're a producer, and you don't have to write all the parts. It's not as hard to write all the other parts. There's still billions, yeah. but I mean, Adrian yeah. helps out so much with 
yeah uh the, the core he's just a genius with chords and is always like what if we did this and like changes one no and i'm like it sounds the same but <laughs> next thing you know i'm like crying when they're like playing this chord progression or whatever but and then montana is just good at uh, he just knows what kind of sounds will fill everything in and stuff like that and like i said i just i just ride the drums and they kind of do the rest <laughs> no brad has great melodies too brad brad has the the awesome mindset of not harmonic you know focus yeah he's thinking like what sounds good in the big picture so he's like what if we did it this way and comes oh, from interesting it. just like more of like because montana and i are like oh what if we throw in this chord or this chord brad like that chord doesn't sound good. What if the chord <laughs> felt like, like he, he's more about the feeling than like what's what it is. What's I, correct. I don't know what key we're in. Yeah. If we're like G major, minor, you know, sus seven or whatever. I'm like, what if it was just a little bit higher and had some tension yeah. a little bit lower and you know, whatever. I, I kind of like the lack of knowledge I have because it keeps my ears a little bit more consumer friendly where I think when you know so much, you're really tainted by your knowledge. But I mean, that's how I'm totally like every lost in the symphony, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. That. Totally. No, that, that's cool. That's really cool. Oh man. So yeah, it looks like you guys have a good dynamic then. That's, that's uh -huh. fantastic. <laughs> have you guys done a lot of live streaming or have you done any live streaming this year? Or yeah. We've done as far as uh, concerts. Yeah. yeah, we've uh, right towards the beginning we did a we did a couple of things where um, <clears throat> it was fun. We we tried this thing out where we did kind of a, a tour through um, different venues around the country's Instagrams that we've played. Uh, oh, cool. yeah, yeah, so like we did a Rockwood Music Hall out in New York. So we they gave us their login info on their uh, on their social, and we did a live stream for that. Uh, for that account and then we did another one for in la and we did another one for this other company you know what i mean so it's kind of fun to bounce stuff. around stuff um we recently played uh back-to-back -back shows at kilby court um and we we live streamed one of them um and so that was fun to be able to have like people watching at home at the same time as people watching in person so even though it was 10 percent capacity it was it was a bunch of fun Wow, ten percent. That's that's crazy. Like oh man, percent. But yeah, it was we it, because of the low numbers. I think we sold out both shows in like twenty four hours, something like that. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, it was oh, fun. Man. That's fantastic. That's awesome. Yeah, the live streaming that'll that'll be interesting. That'll be cool to to see what you guys do. You know, going forward with you know once once people can start attending shows again regularly and it's back mm -hmm. to normal. You know, whatever the hybrid is, it'll be interesting to yeah, see. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see know. how people like incorporate it still. I want to do how yeah. do you guys what the flaming lips do with those Zorb balls? Oh, yeah. So everyone no. gets their own like enclosed bubble, and the band plays in an enclosed bubble too. So they're like these crazy like stage divers and mosh pits with the <laughs> bubbles. Really sick. Oh my so God. I'm hoping that's the future. <laughs> that's the, <laughs> I'm hoping it's not. That would be so yeah. sick just like running off the stage. I, oh, I think the, the live stuff is going to stick for a while. I mean, when the world opens back up, there's still going to be a lot of people that may be scared or don't want to go out. And, and I think it's just going to be an opportunity for artists to sell more tickets than the capacity of the venue. Cause you know, people want to see them live on the internet and you can do a little discounted ticket for something like that. And, and then still sell out the venue. I, I think it's awesome. And it kind of opened up a lot of cool things for artists. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is too. I think anywhere that more opportunity can grow, I think is a, is awesome. And this year has kind of given all of us that. And it sounds like you guys on a lot of personal levels too, with, with your writing and everything. Um, so we do, I do like to ask this question to, to the artists. Um, what is something that's been, a challenge that that you hated going through kind of especially with the band or with musically or anything that at the time it was just kind of the worst you know but in hindsight you're really glad you did go through it i don't know if, if it's patty but <laughs> but i think we're all thinking the same thing we've recently lost members of the band um we we had a we had a couple more and um they uh, yeah it was they're our best friends you know yeah they left yeah. The, they left pretty close to the same time. 
Um, <clears throat> but obviously, like like your question stated, it, it was kind of a blessing in disguise where we found a synergy within the band that has been um, incredibly fun to, with writing, fun with shows, more stage space to jump around. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm not simple stuff. Shoved in the corner, like I always <laughs> kind of like get too far into the room. <laughs> You're now more in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah, Adrian got upgraded from uh from stage left to center left. Yeah, <laughs> hey, that three feet, man, that makes a difference. Yeah, it's a big deal, man. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's but it's just been fun. Like um the it's it's interesting with the writing aspect, getting um it's it's been a fun challenge having the same full sound with three instruments, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. and so, um, it's made us reevaluate the way that we, you know, work our compositions. Mm -hmm. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Cause before we had all these different layers that we can add, but to go with that blessing in the sky, that kind of really pushed our, our musical boundaries, um, to see how much we could do with, you know, so little. I yeah. Really Brad, yeah. Brad is using his drums as a lot more of a, not necessarily melodic, but more of like oh, wow. a front of front of the mix type of a, a sound where he's adding a lot more um interesting parts to his writing that um isn't just a, a backbeat to the song you know what i mean it's not yeah. just just it's not just keeping the song in rhythm it's adding an element just as much as vocals add an element you know so yeah yeah oh man yeah that's great that's that's a great um perspective we we like oh sorry what yeah, do you guys, since you've gone from, you know, a five piece to a three piece, do you guys now incorporate like more tracks with you guys or is it just purely what you guys are playing with your instruments? About the same as it used yeah. to be. We'd only add tracks. We, we never want to be a lip syncing band. You know, people do that <laughs> yeah. and that's good on them, like teach their own. But we always just like to add tracks like for things that we don't really want to bring on stage or <laughs> we're playing something at the same time. Like we don't want to just sit there and have to play Shaker the whole time, you know, so we'll have Shaker and the backing tracks. But We've kind of had to re readapt too. Um, so now Montana and I will switch between keys live on top of the instruments we're playing. So, oh, cool. But then there are times where there's guitar and bass playing. We'll have keys there. Just we, we kind of prioritize it in level of importance of, hey, like what part needs to be played and then what part will people not care so much if that part's being tracked versus being played also what part do yeah. people not care if it's even there at all yeah exactly yeah we'll, we'll take out parts completely like to make other parts cooler yeah you know? i think so in that way oh sorry go ahead I, I think with most artists i mean once you get a, a lot more experience like the recorded songs are pretty polished right you know we, we want to make sure they're extremely professional um but then live you do have a lot more freedom to still sound full and and fun you know uh i know montana's been working a lot on his guitar tones because he has a lot of clean tones in the mix but live we need something that's big and full you know and we're not going to use those those big and full tones in the mix as often just because they're not as approachable i guess and so yeah. I, I kind of like to, I, I, we talked about, you know, the national, mm, they are cool. such a chill band, right? When you listen to yeah. them, it's like, they're just so chill. And then live they're, they're monsters. They're going so hard and it's, it's big and heavy, but people still love it. And so it's like, you know, I, I think we're, we're just trying to get the right tones and stuff to where we can just be that three piece. Those tracks are minimum and we can sound rocking and big but, you know, in the mix, it might be a little bit more mellow or something like that, or it's it's more, you know, the production aspect, but that's yeah. kind of where, where we're leaning. We, we hate it when you go see a band and it's like, you just hear tracks going on. Yeah. The drums yeah. are doubled, you know, the backup vocals are louder than, than the main vocals. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's just too much, you know, you, you want it to be a raw sound, so... We, yeah. we try to keep it to a minimum as much as we can. No, that, that makes sense. Sorry, my, uh, my thing is going to die here. It's just telling me I forgot to plug it in before, before we begin. Um, I like the Middle Earth piano, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, my, yeah. my wife made, has the exact same one that she made. So I thought no it kidding. was a stamp this whole time. <laughs> I thought you had like, one of those old school <laughs> stamps. <laughs> like, that's a very... Oh, yeah. Just a little... Uh, little piano i you know 
we, we came down here and we had the table and I was just like, Hey, yeah. I haven't, you know, this is just on a shelf. I haven't, I haven't used this ever. It's perfect. Yeah, no, thanks. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, yeah, no, we, uh, the backing track, you know, that whole, that whole thing about making the live show different from your, from your recording. I like that a lot. And, and we have seen you guys live before and I, you, you guys were fantastic. And I think that's, you can feel you on the stage, you know, you can, you can feel you. This was a couple of years ago that we saw you, but, but still you, you guys had a great presence. And I think that um, the concepts that you're talking about carry over and, and, and they show, you know, so we're, we, yeah, we're excited to see you guys play more live shows. Do you have any idea of um, any more live stream shows or, or live shows coming up in the future? We have a we, DL one, sorry. Yeah, man. no, we just we we don't have any live stream plans right now. We're we're trying to as we're as we're coming to the end of this um, album, um, we're trying to keep shows and stuff like that to a minimum so that we can. Um, <clears throat> in the past, a lot of times the end of our albums is pretty rushed, and it's like crap. Our deadline's coming up. We gotta cram cram the last couple songs out. Um, so we wanna we wanna finish this album out as best as we can um so we don't have anything like that planned but we're we're planning ahead towards um the album coming out and hoping that um around that time world will be um at a a version of normal and um so that's that's kind of what we're putting our plans and focuses on right now um but it's it's still it's it's still in the working phase (laughs) okay yeah yeah and and i I don't know. I didn't have a date written down. Do you, do you have a rough time of when you plan on releasing that entire album? Like a rough end of August, end of, the year? Sort of. End of August. Um, don't quote yeah. us on that though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not official, right? Uh, fall. Yeah. <laughs> fall. Summer, fall, fall. <laughs> yeah. Summer, fall 2021. Is- <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta, gotta make it right. Right. That's the, yeah. that's the most important thing for sure. Well, well, yeah, no, well, it's been great having you guys on. Um, you know, let's, let's plug in your socials. Tell people where they can find you if they, if, if they're interested in checking you out. Our personals? No, no, our social. Uh, <laughs> your social. Yeah, oh, social. Send us social. Ah, <laughs> one, two, three, Thanks. four, five. Six, no, seven. honestly, everything's just Cinder's music. Cinder's music. Except for our Venmo. Except for our Venmo <laughs> is Cinder's dash music. My Ooh. Uh, nope, stop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't yeah you, you can find us like anywhere if you search Cinder's music nice. so yeah fantastic fantastic well thanks you guys thanks for joining us today we've enjoyed having you on Bowie do you have any other questions that uh that you'd like to ask yeah one more final question um so you guys have had a lot of experience you guys have done a lot of cool things with touring and all that stuff um what is one piece of advice you would give an artist who is either like doing what you're doing right now or who, who is going to take the te- steps you have taken in the past? What advice would you give them? So my favorite thing to tell every person that I see playing is give someone a, re- give someone a reason to come see you play live. You know, anyone could use an app, Spotify, YouTube, whatever, to listen to you. There's no, if there's no reason that someone should go pay to see the exact same thing, right? So have fun. That's the biggest thing. Music is too expensive of a hobby and too time consuming to not have fun all the time. So have fun for yourself, have fun and make it fun for everyone. Yeah. I think my piece would be that to, to treat it like a job, you know, a lot of people treat it like a hobby and expect to, um, to get somewhere with it, to have a career off of a hobby. And that, um, in today's, day with music that just doesn't happen um unless you're crazy lucky like justin bieber who makes youtube videos um (laughs) and um yeah or tiktok but uh yeah you gotta treat it like a job you gotta work your work your nine to fives you gotta you gotta put the time in and um that's the only way to get the results that you're shooting for yeah that's great Um, mine might be a little bit too deep but (laughs) i think uh, there, there's always the, the deserving mentality and people feel like they deserve, you know, to open up for someone or, or they deserve to, you know, get some lucky thing or on some playlist. And, and, you know, you've, you've got to just be willing to put in the work and, and remember that most of your friends and family, like they have their own lives. They, 
are going to find reasons to not come to your shows and they're going to want to, you know, I like, it's, it's, it's just a grind. Like, don't, we, we've never opened up for some big artists. Everyone always just waits. They're like, you know, I just need to open up for someone. I just need to open up for someone. And it's like, that's what we've been telling ourselves for five years. Like <laughs> we just need to open up for someone. It's like, it never happened. We just, it seemed like every show we were the headliners and we just, you know, at first you're begging friends to buy tickets. Yeah. No, just but to have people there. Man. Yeah. Just to, to have people there. But I mean, that that's what you've got to be willing to do. And in order for people to come back, you have to give them a 10 experience. If they have yeah. like, you know, if they're reviewing you and they're like, it was like a six or seven, they're not going to want to come back again. They're going to come once and then they're going to like, I saw them. And so yeah. the last thing is just putting, you have to make sure your show is a huge memorable experience or you, you're going to have to, you know, rely on the luck of getting on some random playlist. And that's every <laughs> show, not, you know, not, yeah. uh, oh, we're playing sold out, whatever. Like we've played shows to two people and still had fun. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's what Matt, because those two people are going to walk away and be like, wow. I saw them with my best friend and they still killed it. And then they'll come back when there's a couple hundred and they're like, this is the same or bet like, you know, Hey, this isn't even as good as when I saw them when it was so personal or intimate, right? Like always, always, you know, shoot for that 10, like Brad said. I was saying that that show was really cool too, because it was out in Atlanta and those people that came to the show where they were, they drove six hours to get there. And so, yeah six hours there six hours back and so um so it's like it's easy to get bogged down in the disappointment and like the um bummer of oh only two people but it's like two two people are willing to drive six hours to come see your show that's pretty cool so it's you got to always think on the positive on on stuff like that it's easy to get bogged down if you want to that's awesome that's awesome man six hours that's yeah. that's dedication, that's man. More than we to get to Atlanta for my last show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Well, so so you were on a tour, actually. That that's a that's actually a good point. I, I wanted to ask you, um, how have tours been? Like you said, you sleep in vans, you sleep in you know on friends' couches and the floors and, and all that. Is that kind of how couch? Tour is? Oh yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. It's, usually we get to a place and they're like, "There's one couch," and we each look at each other like. Who's, who's yeah. gonna get it? <laughs> Brad and I are always the odd ones out because we don't travel. You know, we don't have a partner to sleep with. On. True. Brad and I share. Oh, yeah. Brad and I have shared all the beds together. I'll say that. I like the floor. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's better for my back. It's consistent, but it's, it's no, always a floor. To go to your question, sorry, you were saying how just how is floor? <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's the best thing in the world, man. <laughs> There's nothing. I like yeah. for me. I don't get why people would just rather just make it big off a playlist and not have to put in the work because i think touring and playing shows is the reason to play music right like don't get me wrong i'd love to be a multi-gajillionaire but that means nothing <laughs> that means nothing if i'm not playing shows right totally yeah so, like how can you explain traveling with your best friends around the world you know yeah. like the thickest thing you can do you know yeah oh, i I, awesome. will, I will say yeah. this everyone thinks touring is all about just playing with shows and hanging out with fans but it's like that's one it, it's 90 percent driving and five percent eating and four <laughs> percent setting up and taking down your gear and then one percent you're finally playing shows and hanging out with with yeah. your fans and stuff but i i think as soon as you realize that's what it is and and you enjoy it you're hanging out with your friends you, you have to love to play music if you're just yeah. here to write yeah. then touring's not for you but I mean, I, I've always told myself growing up, like, I don't want to travel the world unless it's with the band. I I don't want to visit Europe for the first time. And, you know, unless we're on tour, you know, and and just things like that. And I, that, that's how I've been my whole life. So I think if you have the right expectations, it can be what you, what you make it. And you have to love the people you do it with because you get sick of them <laughs> very easily. I love well, both of these guys, but you, oh, you, you get, get sick of them. You get sick of them. We always we always do the line. It's from a is it a pup song? A pup, pup. song, and it's uh, if this tour doesn't kill you, I will. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. what's that? Uh, who said a band's like a marriage? Oh, yeah. Who was that that said that? Somebody said a band's like a marriage, a smart right? Smart person said that, whoever said that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Oh, yeah. man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, hey, it's been great to have you guys on. We uh, Good yeah. luck with your release. It's I'm really excited to see it go live and to see what you guys come up with in the future. So uh, we'd love to do this again sometime. You know, good luck with everything that's coming up. Thank and uh, we'll have to get an update. Appreciate it. Sounds good. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, take care. Thanks. We'll see you guys later.